All right, guys, we're still on chapter one, free to choose the power of the market, the role of prices, incentives. <clears throat> this sub chapter of the sub chapter is called incentives. The effect of transmission of accurate information is wasted unless the relevant people have an incentive to act. and act correctly on the basis of that information. It does no good for the producer of wood to be told that the demand for wood has gone up unless he has some incentive to react to the higher price of wood by producing more wood. One of the beauties of a free price system is that the prices that bring the information also provide both an incentive to react to the information and the means to do so. This function of prices is intimately connected with the third function, determining the distribution of income. It cannot be explained without bringing that function into the account. The producer's income, what's, what he gets for his activities, is determined by the difference between the amount he receives from the sale of his output and the amount he spends in order to produce it. He balances the one against the other and produces an output such that producing a little more would add as much to his cost as to his receipts. A higher price shifts this margin. He balances the one against the other. The difference between what the amount he receives from the sale of what he sells, which are his outputs, and the amount he spends in order to produce he balances the one against the other and produces an output such that producing a little more would add as much to his costs as his receipts. He balances the one against the other and produces an output such that producing a little more would add as much to his costs as to his receipts. In general, the more he produces, the higher the cost of production, still more. He must resort to wood in less accessible or otherwise less favorable locations. He must resort to wood in less accessible or otherwise less favorable locations. He must hire less skilled workers or pay higher wages to attract skilled workers from other pursuits. But now the higher price enables him to bear these higher costs and so provides both the incentive to increase output and the means to do so. Price also provides an incentive to act on information not only about the demand for output, but also about the most efficient way to produce a product Suppose one kind of wood becomes scarcer and therefore more expensive than another. The pencil manufacturer gets that information through a rise in the price of the first kind of wood because his income too is determined by the difference between sales receipts and costs. And he has an incentive to economize on that kind of wood. To take a different example, whether it is less costly for loggers to use a chainsaw or a handsaw depends on the price of the chainsaw and the handsaw, the amount of labor required with each, and the wages of different kinds of labor. The enterprise doing the logging has an incentive to acquire the relevant technical knowledge and to, com and to combine it with the information transmitted by prices in order to maximize costs. Or take a more fanciful case that illustrates the subtlety of the price system. The rise in the price of oil, engineered by the OPEC cartel in 1973, it's funny he's calling them a cartel, <laughs> altered slightly the balance in favor of the handsaw by raising the cost of operating a chainsaw or because of the oil. The, so the OPEC cartel in 1973 altered slightly the balance in favor. So the rise in the price of oil, engineered by the OPEC cartel, 
altered slightly the balance in favor of the handsaw by raising the cost of operating the chainsaw. If that seems far-fetched, consider the effect on the use of diesel-powered versus gasoline-powered trucks to haul logs out of the forest and to the sawmill. To carry this example one step further, the higher price of oil, insofar as it was permitted to occur, raised the cost of products that used more oil relative to products that used less. Consumers had an incentive to shift from one to the other. The most obvious examples are shifts from large cars to small ones and from heating by oil to heating by coal or wood. To go much further, so those are substitutes. But one thing, so like, like um, th there's um, there is compliments, like oh dude, usually I like to eat um, rice with my my fish, but the price of rice went up, so I'm probably not gonna eat that, you know. So that affects the price of fish, or that affects the demand for fish. Um, if if uh, if beef goes up, fish is, is has remained the same, then I'm probably gonna switch to fish so that the demand for for fish goes up, because the price of another a price of a, a substitute went up or if, if a substitute went down and I usually like to eat fish, but fish is more expensive now. So now I'm going to go back to chicken because chicken has stood the same and it's more expensive to eat fish, you know? So, so consumers had an incentive to shift from one to the other. The most obvious examples are shifts from large cars to small ones and from heating oil, heating by coal or wood to go much further afield to more remote effects. Insofar as the relative price of wood was raised by the higher cost of producing it, Insofar as the relative price of wood was raised by the higher cost of producing it or by the greater demand for wood as a substitute source of energy, the resulting higher price of lead pencils gave consumers an incentive to economize on pencils and so on in infinite variety. Like and so on in infinite variety. We have discussed the incentive effect so far in terms of producers and consumers. But it also operates with respect to workers and owners of other productive resources. A higher demand for wood will tend to produce a higher wage for loggers. Because they need more, they need to produce more. And they might, they might run out of uh, workers, so you have to incentivize them to come work for you by give, raising the wages. This is a signal that labor of that type is in great demand than before. Or greater demand. A higher demand for wood will tend to produce a higher wage for loggers. This is a signal that labor of that type is in greater demand than before. So a higher demand for wood will tend to produce a higher wage for loggers. This is a signal that, so that, that transmission of information. This is a signal that labor of that type is in greater demand than before. The higher wage gives workers an incentive to act on that information. Some workers who were indifferent about being loggers or doing something else may now choose to become loggers. More young people entering the labor market may become loggers because they pay well. Here too, interference by government through minimum wages, for example, or by trade unions. So here too, interference by government through minimum wages, for example, or by trade unions through restricting entry may distort the information transmitted or may prevent individuals from freely acting on that information. So trade unions, you got to join the union, you have to pay them. So he's not a, he don't like unions at all. Information about prices, whether it be wages and different activities or the return to capital from different uses is not the only information that is relevant in deciding how to use a particular resource. It may not even be the most important information, particularly about how to use one's own labor. That decision depends in addition on one's own interests and capacities. What the great economist Alfred Marshall called the whole, I gotta look, I gotta read his books. What the great economist Alfred Marshall called the whole of the advantages and disadvantages of an occupation monetary and non-monetary satisfaction in a job may compensate for low wages 
On the other hand, higher wages may compensate for a disagreeable job. The whole of the advantages and disadvantages of an occupation. <laughs> so Alfred Marshall, got to read some of his books. When you read up on people, they'll tell you who to read. That's what I learned about reading. You'll, you'll know where they get the information and they'll tell you what to read. 